This was far from the end. Far from the end. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I'm so glad that it's Patricia we're recognizing because Patricia, you really don't see her out there, right? Her face is not out there much, but she's always working really hard for the community. And we, we usually recognize the same faces all the time. And the people who are out there, we need to start recognizing the real MVPs and hard workers for our community. So I, I'm really happy that we're recognizing you. Quería decir que yo estoy sumamente feliz y orgullosa de poder reconocer a Patricia, porque usualmente nosotros, cuando vamos a hacer reconocimiento, reconocemos a personas que están muy activas en la comunidad y que todo el mundo conoce y ve a diario. Y tenemos que empezar a reconocer personas que están haciendo mucho trabajo la parte de atrás, pero que sabemos que están activas y que lo están haciendo por el bien de la comunidad. So now I'm going to leave you with Councilman Solano, who has a poem. Lo voy a dejar ahora con el concejal. Aquí Solano con un poema. Con el poeta de Franklin. What should I do? Está bonito, está bonito. It's a pleasure to be here celebrating this wonderful woman, her legacy, what she has done for this community. It's amazing. It's a great, great pleasure to say, Viva Colombia, Viva los Colombianos. Uh, what she has done and what many of you people from Colombia have done in this community is amazing. So, congratulations. Consul Woman just asked me for a poem. And uh, I never say no, so I'm going to try. I can roll anything. So I'm gonna do a poem that I brought in daylight today, like today, uh, and I call Modern Nature. So voy a hacer un poema. Primeramente, es un placer estar aquí, celebrando a esta valiosa mujer, a esta gran mujer de la tierra de Colombia. Su legado, lo que ella ha traído a esta comunidad, es algo que va a quedar para la postrimería. Este, apreciamos mucho a Patricia, a su familia y todo lo que ella ha hecho por nosotros. So, Mi concejal, mi presidente, me acaba de pedir que haga un poema, no escribí nada, o so voy a hacer un poema que yo escribí en un día como el que está hoy, lluvioso. So este poema yo lo bauticé como Madre Naturaleza. Así que vamos a ver qué es lo que dice. El día está lluvioso, así amaneció. El cielo tiene un color entre azul y gris. Está nublado. Y yo que soy un fiel amante de la naturaleza, con todas sus variantes, me deleito y me lo disfruto. Sí, me lo disfruto. Puedo ver a los niños corretear por toda la casa. Puedo ver con el amor y la dedicación que mi esposa es dueña de la situación. Prepara de comer. Me lleva agua, manzana y café a la cama. ¡Qué bien! Allá afuera cae la lluvia. Aquí adentro brota el amor. Y mientras cae la lluvia, buenísima para alimentar las flores y las plantas, por supuesto lo digo así porque la mujer es una flor, tierna, bella y dedicada, que así debe ser tratada. Gracias, papá Dios, por la majestuosidad, majestuosidad de haber creado nuestro mundo tan hermoso, y más aún, de haber sacado a la mujer de la costilla del hombre. Y entiendo muy bien por qué lo hiciste así, para que la mujer vaya a nuestro lado, porque las mujeres son la mitad del mundo y madre de la otra mitad. De no ser aquí, así, no estuviéramos nosotros aquí. Gracias a ustedes mujeres por ser tan abnegada y virtuosa, y a Papa Dios por la madre naturaleza. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Now I'm gonna ask her friend, who's more like a sister, come up and say a few words. So, amiga de la carrera. Quiero empezar esta intervención agradeciéndole al señor Tomás Ávila, ¿dónde está Tomás? Y a mi amiga, la concejal María Rivera, por hacer posible este evento. Padre, vuelve y juega. Así dicen los tabúes. 
Y aquí está nuevamente para recalcar lo que significas para mí. Pero más importante, lo que significas para esta comunidad que te ha visto trabajar día a día, hora tras hora, minuto a minuto, para abrirle nuevas oportunidades y sembrar semillas de esperanza. Liderando el camino. Esto es lo que el señor Ávila podría encontrar mejor título para tus memorias. Gracias, Patri. Yo soy producto de tu liderazgo. Me diste la oportunidad de trabajar para ti como vista voluntar voluntaria y de ti aprendí tu ética de trabajo tu respeto a los más vulnerables y tu fe en Dios. Hemos caminado tantos años juntas, alrededor de 37 años. Aquí estamos en casa. Ya está diciendo cosas que no Y esto es una vida. Juntas lideramos dos organizaciones en Central Force y hoy vemos con mucho orgullo Aquellos jóvenes que participaron de nuestros programas convertidos en adultos. Pero estoy segura que muchos de ellos tendrán recuerdos de un progreso latino y un proyecto Esperanza de la Yel. Para que ahora me toca a mí. ¿Qué me toca decir? Pues tú eres, otra vez, lo repito, mi amiga incondicional. Tú eres la hermana que me regaló Don Arturo al adoptarme como su hija putativa. Patri, tienes tantas cualidades. Eres una buena mamá, buena esposa, una buena hermana y una hija ejemplar. Sí, va a ser abuela. Ay, va a ser una abuela. Pues. Gracias por nunca cambiar. A pesar de las diferentes posiciones en las que te has desarrollado, eres la misma que en el 82 era simplemente una organizadora de la comunidad. Este homenaje ha sido muy merecido. Gracias por ser nuestra líder, nuestro mentor y que Dios te guarde siempre. Te quiero mucho. Qué linda, yo quiero tener amigas así. Yo tengo amigas así, pero mientras vaya creciendo. Ahora lo voy a dejar con su esposo, el señor Martínez. Esta noche estoy en problemas. I'm in trouble tonight because she didn't know that's gonna happen. They told me don't say anything. Me dijeron no diga nada. Tiene que traerla aquí. You know how difficult to bring this woman here, not knowing what's going on. It's always like a like, like when we ask a kid, can you do this white? Why do you this white? So last night I said Pat. Uh, we have to go tomorrow, remember. He said, what is it we're gonna do over there? I said, remember that I told you they give me a recognition tomorrow? He said, I told you that's for women. He said, no, well, I'm a woman sometimes, you know. <laughs> you pretend I'm a woman because they're gonna do it. I know, I, I got no idea why they're gonna do it. But eventually she is here, finally. What can I say about Patricia that you guys don't know? Because she is open work to the whole community. Yes, she is. She's been doing this for so many, many years that um, everybody knows her. I can now move a finger in this tail of Rhode Island that they don't say, oh, you're Patricia's husband. <laughs> and the, the, the people that doesn't know me are still is there to tell. You know who that is? They said, no, that's Patricia's husband. <laughs> so, I become Patricia's husband, not the other way around. So, like my friend uh, Ricardo Patino said, Mr. Incapier. 
Nami Uncle Marian named Hinkapi, so they he called me Mr. Hinkapi. Um, Patricia, like Estella said, she's a good friend, a loyal friend, a great daughter, excellent mother. Such a mother that she gave me the beautiful boy over there. Then he gonna give me a boy over there next to her, next to him. She found that beautiful woman in there. I know it's not for you this program, I know. But Ramonita's my daughter-in-law, our daughter-in-law, and we're gonna be a grandparents. Um, finally. <laughs> she one day she told me, said, I don't wanna be a grandmother yet. I'm too, too young to be a grandmother. And I looked at her and said, no, you're not. <laughs> then, oh, we got another son. I'm sorry, I forgot that. <laughs> but he's not here. He's in Puerto Rico. Having a good time. She could have made it. Um, having a good time with her daughter. <laughs> and Pat, you are a, a tiny person with a heart as big as this building. This woman never say, I hate somebody. I never hear saying that. She always finds something nice to say about anybody, anybody or everybody. Not like me, I hate everybody. <laughs> but she always has nothing to say about somebody. She never finds something wrong with people. She always finds strengths in people, and that's the great thing about her. She always says, this person is not a bad person. Nobody's a bad person. She is always a good person. One time when she was a car jack, her car, she was a car jack in Pawtucket, mm -hmm. in the parking lot of the church. You know what she said? Oh, I feel so sorry about that kid. The kid was what? 21 years old, mm -hmm. the knife for her to her car, and she's, the only thing she said, I don't want him to go to jail. Mm -hmm. I said, why? Sorry. She said, because look at your son. Save me your son. If you want to do it, go to, go to court and say, you know what, don't put him in jail. Train him, educate him. But the, 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 the lawyer said, no, you can't say that. You cannot, you're not allowed to speak. So, poor kid wasn't, she just came out of prison recently. And she's always wondered, I wonder what happened to that kid. That's my wife. That's Patricia Martinez. They lost everybody. I promise I'm not gonna cry, but I always talk about you. <laughs> because I'm waiting, I'm waiting for the baby, I'm not gonna get tonight. That's why I got this. <laughs> but I love you. I always will. Because you're a forgiving person. You forgive everybody, even me. You give me that a lot of love. And I love you so much too. Thank you, Pat. You're a great person. You're a great human being. And everybody loves you. That's right. So, el culpable de, de todo esto es el señor Tomás Ávila. 
The reason why many of us are here today is because it's due to Tomas Avila. He has a surprise for you. You know, Tomas is always trying to figure out how to get the community together and recognize people who deserve it. So I'm going to ask Tomas Avila to come up. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, thank you, everyone, for taking time of your busy schedules to join us here. Uh, I must say that this is the toughest event I have ever planned. <laughs> you know, presidents are easier to schedule <laughs> than our friend Patricia. <laughs> Paul Gabriel is being like, Tú sabes que esa mujer me va a matar, ¿eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think it was, uh, yeah, Saturday we ran into each other and told me the same thing, right? He said, you know, you know Patricia is going to kill me. And, and I said, let me tell you what I told my wife. No disrespect, but I'm glad it's gonna, she's going to kill you and not me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, why are we here? And everybody said it, because of this woman. And why did I decide to do this? I, res I admire and respect individuals who open doors and help other individuals, irregardless of how long they know them or who they are. And that's Patricia Martinez. And I say that because I'm a testament of it. I met Patricia, gosh, going into 30 years. But it's interesting, when I decided to get involved in the Latino community, Patricia was already established. She was established leader. I was a newcomer. I had moved from, um, from Boston to Rhode Island. And three years after I moved here, I decided to put my experience into helping the community advance. And I kept hearing this name, Patricia Martinez, Patricia Martinez, uh, yeah, among other names. But, uh, Interestingly enough, when I got to know Patricia, it was like, it seemed like we knew each other for years. It was, oh, I don't mind, like, you know, you know how she is. <laughs> but not only that, you know, I always say that, you know, we always see the leaders in every position and everything else, but what we don't see is those who open path. I have always given credit and thank publicly my good friend back there, Betty Bernal, because she did it with me also. But I haven't had the opportunity to do it with Patricia publicly. And that's why part of the reason that I decided to do this. And let me tell you how the idea came. Back on May 3rd, our good friend here and a team uh, celebrated our good friend Gonzalo Puerto's birthday. And we, it was a surprise for him also. Uh, my good friend, uh, Madam President, and Obed Pop asked me to do a book for Gonzalo to capture. I do these books where it's like, I don't write, I write very little, but I collect a lot of information. And I put them all together and do it into what I call a diary of individual's life. And uh, when Patricia came into the, to, uh, into the event, all of a sudden, she, she came to me and she's like, did you do this for, for Gonzalo? And I said, yeah. She said, oh my God, you did this. I said, yeah. And she said the following. She said, you know, the most important uh, thing that you can do for somebody is to write, to give them a book. And I said, oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell her, but right away I said, so if that's the highest recognition that somebody can do for somebody else, I must do one for her. And that's what I did. Right away I started collecting information. Fortunately, Patricia has been very open. She invited me to be part of Progreso Latino. She Again, she opened doors and everything. So it was easy because I had most of the information. Back in the 90s when the internet started, uh, you know, became the boom that it started to be, I recognize one thing, digital information is key. And digital information eventually will disappear because people are gonna start charging for it. 
So what I did, I started collecting digital information as soon as the internet came. So I, che I shared with people, and I say it here, I have about 300,000 pages about the evolution of the Latino community in this state of Rhode Island, because I've been collecting it since then. With Patricia, needless to say, is, so the book is 450 pages. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you know there's a lot of information. And the reason I do these books is because at the time that I did here, I seen so many people disappear, and there's nothing left but the memory. There's nothing left but if the friends who we knew and, re and remember them. But there's nothing to transfer to the next generation. And I think we need to do more than that. And I take it, that responsibility to start doing it. You know, to start putting these books together. It's not a biography, like I say, it's a diary. I call it a diary. And it's a collection of what that person has contributed to this state, and by contributing to this state, to the United States of America. And <clears throat> Patricia has done that at all levels. <coughs> Excuse me. At all levels. And that's why I decided to do it. And so, but I didn't want to do it a simple reception. So I asked my good friend, Madam President, to be the leader, to work and make it happen. And let me tell you that this, to put this event together has been going on since June. And you know, because it had to be highly secret. <laughs> and you know, so we, Anyway, we, uh, we couldn't agree because of the secrecy that he had to be. So eventually we just decided, what an honor for a management, thank you. <laughs> uh, so it, but we've been working on that about it since June. And we finally decided, you know what, we, if we continue this way, 2020 is gonna come and we're not gonna do anything. So that's why I'm here. So Patricia, I wanna say thank you for everything that you've done for the community, for Rhode Island, but in particular, I want to personally and publicly thank you for what you've done for me. You may not think that you've done anything for me, but you have, because you open doors, you include me, you advise me, you put me in places that, honestly, I never thought I would be. I remember some of the meetings that you invited me to. I remember some of the projects that you made me part of to be and whatnot. And uh, you know, so I always appreciated that and forever will be grateful of what you did and what you contributed to me personally. And that's why we are here. And that's why I decided to do what I'm doing. So this is Oh, wow, that's good. Cool. And uh, again, it's about 450 pages. It contains everything that she did at Progreso Latino, everything that she did at the, uh, when she went to the school department, and everywhere as she moved along, I was able to collect enough information to document it and put it into this book. Wow. And I'm glad that her son is here, who I remember when he was a little. <laughs> and now, you know, but it is for him. It is for his children. It is for the next generation. So that they, someday they can open this book and say, oh, this is what my grandmother did. And on and on and on. So Patricia, you come here. Oh, okay. So I printed five books for you. Tomas, thank you. Thank you. And everything that's in that page is what you've done. And the other thing that I want to share is that within these books, is there are five different studies that were made about the Latino community, starting in 1983 to 2016. There is a name that constantly comes out on that, 
and it is Patricia Martinez. <laughs> to make to each one of you, because I think it's true. What we owe to our community in the state of Rhode Island, what we owe to our grandchildren, our children, is this, is the legacy of where do we come from. And today I'm here not because of me, but I'm here because in the 70s, my parents took a journey, and it's interesting that Many of you were, were with my family, my sisters, my brother, uh, my husband, and my children. As we were saying goodbye to my mom, this week it will be 20 years. And I always remember that you were there. It was them who, without knowing the language, came here. I just left the meeting with a group of our newcomers. And when I left that meeting, I said, we owe it to them. It's when I look at the city council in Central Falls, when I look at the city pre uh, council president, at the mayor, this is the generation that we owe it to you. And if anything I could ask of you is that you continue to pass that button. We have to be serving leaders because that's the only thing that is going to make a difference in our community. I'm here because I have a group of people that have wrapped around me through all my years. My husband, as I said when I came here, I wasn't planning to come. I wasn't a meeting. But it's because every time I have an event or something that was war related, and Estella and I often talked about the fact that, oh my God, if it was not for our families, who are always, we're always dragging them to events, my oldest son, Lenny, when he was little one, he would be with me at Progress Latino while we were writing proposals until 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the evening. We have all done that. I'm no different. This is who you are. You too have done that. I'm honored and humbled for this recognition. But if anything, I promise that we will have one of these for each one of you. Because this is what we need to give my grandchild who's coming very soon. <laughs> your children, your nieces, your nephew, our grandchildren. That's the only way we could make the history. I wrote in a, in a text message to our school administrators this week when you saw the sad reality of some of the comments that our students were faced with. Yes. You know, when they go high, when they go low, we go high. Because we don't need to lower ourselves. We could just meet all we want to do is continue working as we have, continue the legacy that our parents gave us. Our parents came here in a plane. Our new parents are coming here walking. We cannot get out of our, of our car to go into the bank. We ride around. These parents walk to make sure that one day they're going to achieve a rich center for and have their kids in schools. The mom who makes tortilla, or who was making tortillas in, in, in Mexico, or in Guatemala, hoping that one day they will get a meeting with Councilwoman Vega, so she, they could get the advice of how to set up their own business. We owe it to all of you. We owe it to our grandchildren. My friends, you are all my, my strength. My husband, my kids, my brothers, my sisters, you know that I'm not here doing this work. I'm here because of all of you. When the kids were little, it was you guys picking them up so that I could stay in the office because Gabe was at work. Or, take, or my father picking them up, taking them to their home. So we don't do this alone. We do it, como dicen, it takes a village to raise a child. And I have been lucky 
to have all of you, to have my family, my husband, my brothers and sisters, to raise me in the work that I love to do. But it's something that we need to pass it on. And only through this, I'll promise you and I'll challenge you that maybe every month, Mayor or Council President, we will have to celebrate one, each one of you, because this is how we write the history, so that our grandkids could say, oh, so is that the reason why that street is named for Viola Davis? So is that the reason why we have the first Colombian mayor and a council in the city of Central Falls that it's 99% Latino representing our city? So this is just a promise. I thank you because I'm not here and I didn't get here alone. And clarify the story of the, my car jacket story. <laughs> at that time, I was still at, you know, at DCYF, and I had seen every Friday night, I used to have, when I studied at the department, I promised myself and the kids at the training school that I would have dinner in the female unit one Friday, and then the following Friday with the boys unit. And it was in those dinners with those kids that I learned that our kids are so vulnerable. It only takes one wrong turn for them to get in trouble. The same thing is with us. It only takes one wrong thing for us to say or to do for us to get in trouble. But it's when we have people like you, a whole community holding us together, it's that, that's when we don't fall. And that's when we continue to work. And so at the training school, I saw many generations of kids in and out, and we know it. It's it's true. It's the pipeline to the corrections uh, to the adult corrections. And what I wanted to make sure was that that kid was given an opportunity. Unfortunately, the the legal system is such that they were not interested in making sure that he had an opportunity. And as Gabriel said, um, you know that was in '05, no '09 that I got carja. Um, it was in 2017 that the kid was released. So think of it, a life, a 21 year old thrown away. A kid from Pawtucket, um, an African American kid, a kid that nowadays if he had those supports in the wraparounds, um, he would be probably doing some of the work that we're all doing. Um, so that's why we need to do this work. That's why we need to pass the legacy. We didn't get here on our own. We got here because somebody helped us get where we are. And that's one thing we cannot forget. Because the minute we forget that, then it's not about the community or the work that we do. It, then it becomes about us. And that's probably worthless. So thank you. I, I,